Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another video. This is another page request. This time for Kyle. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for a film called La Haine from 1995, which I had never heard of before. But it's a French film. And I guess the director of this would go on to direct Babylon AD with Vin Diesel, which I'm not a fan of that movie. I think that's one of Vin Diesel's worst films. But if they saw this movie, I just see why, hey, this guy has a good talent visually. Only I don't know if this guy really works in a sci-fi action film like that tried to be. Which is, which is far different from this one. Because this is a black and white 1995 French film that's a slice of life. It takes place in one day. Some would say it's a bit similar to... Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing, only if it's in Paris. You have these three guys who are friends, Vincent Castle, or Vincent Cassell, which I recognize from, oh, the John Renault film, The Crimson Rivers? I think it was that one, which I remember not minding, but this cop murder mystery movie. I think it's The Crimson Rivers. He was partnered up with John Renault. He's the hothead of the group. You have Hubert, a French African American guy. He's more the pacifist. He's more in the middle. You know, he's more uh, wanting to get out of this, wanting to have a future. And then you have this other guy who's a bit in the middle. He's a little bit of Hubert. He's a little bit of Vincent's character. Which is actually Vinz, V I N Z. That's the name of his character. So he's kind of in the middle. And it takes place, and I, I don't know much about Paris history, but the way they showcase here is that there was a lot of riots abound and poverty and kind of like Harlem transplanted into Paris. Just poverty, riots, hating the cops. One of their buddies has been hurt by a cop, is in the hospital, and Vins is sitting there going, you know, if, my, if our buddy dies, I'm going to kill a cop, I swear, I swear. And it's their slice of life where they kind of just wander around Paris. They, You see a bit of them with their families. I said Vins is very hot-headed. He even does a little bit of taxi driver in the mirror. You talking to me? You talking to me? It is in French, so you have to watch with subtitles. I don't know if there is a dub version, but I just much prefer the natural language with the subtitles. And throughout the day, one of them gets a gun. They go. They try to go see their friend at the hospital, but they're pushed away. They're pissed off at the cops. They witness someone try to shoot someone and they shoot the guy's trunk. I think it's a cop's trunk. And so the cop arrests the guy. But then the group tries to attack him and the cop's telling him to back off. I won't put the cops screw with Hubert and the, the other guy. And they get arrested and abused in jail. But ultimately let go while Vins is all with his other guy. And they go into the plot... It's more about just showcasing the rough and tumble life these three guys are living amongst this landscape of what's going on in Paris at the time, which I didn't know that was happening in Paris. We in the States, we don't know much about that. But the actors felt natural. Uh, Hubert, he has a little bit of a boxing background. At one point we see him punching bag. At one point, Vince tries to shoot a cop, but Hubert pushes away and decks the cop, boom, right in the face. <laughs> and they go off. But the photography is beautiful in this movie. The black and white photography and the camera work. There are shots in this movie that I'm like, how the hell did they do that? Like, there's a cool looking shot when the guy's doing the taxi driver impression. We're behind him. 
and we're supposed to be looking at a mirror and the guy ducks and it pushes into the mirror and then the guy gets up and it's like we go through the mirror so I'm guessing they had a double here to go down the same time that the mirror was not a mirror it was a window so I'm, I'm guessing this was a window but it's supposed to be a mirror this was his double and so when he goes down he goes down at the same time then the camera passes by and entering the mirror in reality entering a window and then we're with Vincent's Vincent's character so shots like that there's a crazy train shot where a DJ is playing a song it's the sound of the police whoop whoop it's the sound of the beat but there's also a bit of a French remix of it too but this is sound of the police which I do like that song it's a good song this is sound of the beat whoop and the DJ's playing it. But it goes from like his window across the the neighborhood. And it goes pretty far across the neighborhood. It's like going higher and higher. I'm like, how the hell did they do that? Must have been one hell of a train. There's a the secrets where they're going downstairs, the camera's following them. This is a bit when they first get the gun, and then they're in this area that's very dark, and there's like one light up above. And they're checking the gun. When they check the gun, they turn to the camera. Very stylistic in this direction. And as I just see someone looking at this and going, oh, well, this guy, well, let's see what you do with a bigger budget. But Ballon AD was not, was not it. And actually, let me look up to see what this director has done else other than that. <clears throat> uh, oh, he did the Crimson Rivers. Okay. He directed the Crimson Rivers. Which I like that movie too. Uh, as I mentioned. I didn't know he did the Crimson Rivers. Oh, he did Gothica with Halle Berry? Wow. I probably looked that up before and I forgot. The Crimson Rivers, Gothica. He did uh, Café Aleph, this film La Haine, also known as Hate. Assassin in 1997. Nothing to do with the Sylvester Stallone film. Crimson Rivers, Gothica, this movie. Then he did one film called Rebellion. Which is... His, historical drama. And this is the film that got him the... Best Director Prize at the 1995 Cannes Film Festival. Hatred breeds hatred. The idea came to him when a young Zarian was shot in 1993. He was killed at point blank range while in police custody and handcuffed to a radiator. The officer was reported to have been angered by the guy's words and had been threatening him when the gun went off accidentally. So the director began writing the script the day the guy was shot. He was also inspired by a 22 year old student protester who died after being badly beaten by the riot police after a mass demonstration in 1986 which he did not take part. Well there you go. I mean I know past few years we've had instances of police brutality, death, but again, if you think that's only in America, it, it's not far from it. Even in France, that shit was happening. And you do get some bits of humor like when they're confronting these cops on the rooftop and they're calling their moms, you know, crack whore. Your mom's a crack whore. Or one's trying to fix the other's haircut. 
and say, oh, is it sure? Is it right? Okay, no, I, I'll fix it, okay? No, oh, you better be right. No, I, I'm telling you, it's, it's right, okay? I will get it right, all right? Just don't move. But like I said, it's definitely a film that, like I said, it's very much a slice of life. So, it could be a Tish-22 for people, because they're looking for a more specific story. With typical beats, this isn't really it. But it does showcase sort of the danger these people involved in with the environment that's being showcased. But at the same time, there are people just trying to live their lives, and you don't get to know too in depth about their families. You get little glimpses. You get a little bit of what Huber wants to do afterward, but you don't really get a sense of even jobs they work at or such. It's kind of them kind of wandering around and I guess in a way trying to survive the suburban landscape. I would say the, the the thrust of the story gets it to the finale of the film. Spoiler, spoiler star now. Where they break into this place. They see that it's like a mall. They see on TV, on the news, their friend has died. So, of course, Vin's especially is pissed off. They're spit on and picked on by these skinheads. Because they fight him, and he gets one of the skinheads, and is ready to shoot him. But ultimately, he doesn't. And he kind of had this revelation where Vin's, he's a lot of talk, but ultimately, he doesn't do the wrong thing. Which is like, oh, well, that's nice. He decides to learn. He relents. In fact, he even gives the gun to the peaceful guy, Hubert. You know what? He's a hothead, he's doing all this, but he made the right decision. And Sally, it did not fucking matter. As that happens a lot in the real world. Because him and another guy goes off while Huber walks this way. He hears some cops, he turns, he walks towards them. This cop we saw earlier that they were making fun of with the crack core line. He's messing with Vans, got a gun in his face, but the gun accidentally goes off kills him and then Hubert is shot like sh shocked or say shot in his face and then puts a gun and then him and the cop aim a gun at each other and I was a bit confused because there were two cops I swear there were two cops there and there were like two cops holding Vins but when he actually shoots and kills the guy the second guy, like, disappears. Completely disappears. I don't know what happened to that guy. Did that cop run off? Did he disappear into the trunk? Did the repo man car come by with Emilio Estevez and just zap him? What happened to that guy? I don't know. And then it pushes into the, the guy who's kind of been in the middle the whole time. He closes his eyes, you hear a gunshot, and then you don't know who killed who. It's up to your assumption. Some say the top killed him. Some say Hubert killed the top. Because it's a way of showcasing that the peaceful guy, the one who's been peaceful all along, he finally had his wits in. And funny enough, the, the guy who always said he was going to shoot someone didn't. And the guy who was always the peaceful one ended up shooting the top. But then people say, oh, the cop did it. You don't know. I guess the point is, it doesn't matter in a way. If he dies, he dies. If he kills the cop, he still kills the cop. And his friend is still dead. And that's still... His life is going to be different. Even if he somehow gets away with it, his mind frame of mind is going to be different and change forever. So, I, I guess it's up to you. And again, what I appreciated was the direction and the, the style of the film. I mean, the very beginning, 
you have a globe like the world and you have a Molotov cocktail flying in slow-mo to hit the world as if this fully showcased the world as chaos. <laughs> if there's a way to do it, that's the way to do it. And then all this other shit that happens. Where it it goes through these sad, weird, weird real life events of riots and chaos happen in France. I mean, I just in a way is nice to see is not just a character that goes through that. It's not just us. So it's not a film I would rewatch again, but it's fine watching it one time. I mean, I get the ending, the way it's done, the show piece of that impactful power. To be honest, I would have just preferred Hubert shoot the guy, and then he's kind of standing there. And then you could be ambiguous of, will he get caught? Will he get arrested? Will he be the same again? But he'll probably never be the same again. Will he be a hothead like his buddy Vins? Will he be able to overcome it? Or will he succumb to it? Will he ever escape out of this? Will he won't? I would have preferred that. And you still get your ambiguous... But at the same time... What was it? Someone once said... Someone described it. It was interesting. The guy that we hear about, their friend, having been shot... We're kind of different on because we never were worth that character. We were never developed with that character. So we go, oh yeah, don't kill a cop. Come on, don't don't do that. But then, even if you find the guy who did, don't don't kill it. But then now that this is someone you know. Who's been shot, shot, shot and killed. You almost have like a different perspective. Like we want him to shoot the cop. And then they have that, well, wait a minute. Yeah, I want him to shoot the cop. So now we're on the other side of that coin. Unless you're like, no, do it anyway. <laughs> Both cases, shoot him. Fuck them all. But yeah, the, the movie does have some nice tracking shots. I like the black and white photography of it all. I thought the acting felt natural enough. I say it's more of a drama, slice of life. I didn't like Do the Right Thing, Spike Lee, or, or those other movies. So, with some of those I like, Clerks, I love. Grand, much more of an upbeat movie. Despite that alternate ending that they, they changed where Dante died. No, they had to kill him off in Clerks 3, but it's a whole other thing. So, I mean, yeah, there are times where it's not the most exciting movie because of that slice of lifestyle. So, like I say, if you're looking for a movie that has a bit more of a... specific plot points... It's not a movie I would watch over and over again. But like I said, I'm glad I saw it once. And I can appreciate its filmmaking. If that makes sense. But yeah. Other than that, thanks for watching. Take care. Thanks once again, Kyle. And we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.